ferocious warrior, dismantle your enemy and rise. It's the work of Cora Jakes Coleman. She's the daughter of Bishop T.D. Jakes, but also a preacher in her own right. Ephraim Graham sits down with the author, wife, and mother in Studio 5. Before you move, before you speak, before you use the gift that God has given you, consider where you are. Away from the pulpit, Cora Jakes Coleman is a busy wife and mother of two. There is a ferocious warrior in all of us. We are created by the battles that we face. Her latest project and second book is Ferocious Warrior. And I have to say, reading it and learning the behind the scenes of your life, all I could say was, Nothing came easy. No, no, <laughs> I wish it indeed. did, but it did not. <sighs> yes, sir. I would say that people watching from the outside would say, Bishop T.D. Jake's daughter, we see the bishop, we see your mom. Oh, what a perfect life. But yeah. when you say warrior, this is not just warrior reading, this is warrior living. What yes. do you mean by being a ferocious warrior? I, I believe that being a ferocious warrior is so much bigger than just me, myself, but I think it's really just about taking responsibility in the fights of life mm -hmm. and going after them full force and not allowing your situations to suppress your circumstance, but allowing that to fuel you. My father has always taught us to let fear fuel us. Mm -hmm. Don't let it stop us, but allow that fear to fuel you to, to forward. To push forward. If we could talk about just uh, the one line I've heard you say that, that I, I like, but it could be confusing to some people. The beauty of your battle is birthed in a barren yes. place. Yes. Why is that beautiful? <laughs> well, because that's what I learned. When I got diagnosed with infertility, uh, well, PCOS, that leads to infertility, uh, I was placed in a barren place. And so I had to learn how to find beautiful things in the barren place. So it taught me so many beautiful things can be brought out if you're willing to look at the bones and speak into them. And so I learned that my battles and, and the beauty of my battles came from my ability to embrace the barren place and turn it into a beautiful situation. If we could talk about some of the battles, because I believe so many people will relate to them uh, and they may be living through these in a dark place themselves, afraid to even talk about it. but. Um, you're a preacher's kid. Yes. Uh, you talk about uh, being suicidal. Yes, sir. Literally, and att attempted suicide a few times. Yes, sir. How do you get there? Uh, depression and, and lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest with you, I didn't believe enough in myself or enough in God at the time to believe that I was of value beyond what I was going through. Mm -hmm. And um, it's so interesting because my the second time that I tried to attempt suicide, my sister caught me because I wrote her a letter mm -hmm. and she came into my room and she said, you don't want to kill yourself because people who want to kill themselves don't write letters, they just do it. <laughs> and so she was like called me on my whole drama queen situation and she's like we're not gonna do this like you have something to live for and so uh, I had to get out of that place of feeling like I wasn't normal enough for people to love me for people to like me but then to also begin to start loving on myself and trying to figure out what that looks like mm -hmm. one thing I hear you say that I love is that you can't just read the word and hear the word. You've got to actually do the word, and that's a place you graduated to. Yes, absolutely. I, it had to be more than just the PK, listen to your dad preach, and like you kind of take those words home and you know, you know the sermon. But it was about like really doing what the word said and then believing what it said about me gave me such a power that it threatened the enemy. Mm. What was it about your dad? You mentioned him being a minister, and I know that um, there are two things you said in life that you wanted to be uh, a mom and a preacher. Mm -hmm. How do you look at dad and say, I want to do what, what he, what he um, does? What, what did he do? I don't think I looked at quantity. I looked at quality. <laughs> um, he was relentless and, and fero he is relentless mm. and ferocious. And as a little girl, I would see him casting demons out and delivering people. And everybody else was super scared. Uh, but I found it interesting. I felt, I felt a joy 
wall and a pull to it. And I wanted, I wanted demons to be afraid of me like that. I wanted the devil to be afraid of me like that. And it just seemed like the devil was really frightened of my father. So I made a goal to want to be a preacher just like him, if only just to threaten the